every six months or so, I would come back to the venture capitalists and I would show them the new numbers, showing more and more people adopting Linux, the new people porting, new users, and I'd show them our customer list. And our customer list was getting much more impressive. It was people like Cisco that were beginning to appear. People like the, you know, the dot-com companies were starting to show up on our, our customer list. And eventually the venture capitalists, uh, you know, they kept looking at it and they kept saying, oh, we can't quite do it. Finally, Linus appeared on the cover of Fortune because there was something happening with open source. Well, at that point, the, the venture capitalists couldn't ignore it. They just got sick of hearing about Linux everywhere, and they got tired of me just, you know, showing it to them every, every at that point, almost, almost every week. So they, uh, they decided it was time to invest, that there was something happening. Well, I announced open source to the world on the internet. I did a lot of the early administrative work of starting the open source initiative. And I think six months later, I was reading the words open source in the news all the time and was totally astounded. And a year later, I believe Microsoft was talking about releasing some source code. And someone in the press asked Steve Ballmer if they were going to open source their code, and Steve Ballmer said, well, open source means more than just releasing the source code. And I realized that he had read my document and understood it and was now telling the press about this. Now, if you're like just a guy on the net who's not doing this for a job at all, and you sort of write a manifesto, and it spreads out through the world, and a year later, the vice president of Microsoft is talking about that, you'd think you were on drugs, wouldn't you? But that's what really happened. Uh, the local user groups tend to be more an issue of uh, building a social network, uh, especially getting people familiarized with the issues, uh, also just acting as a kind of support network for for people who who do not, for example, have the ability to pay for, for a commercial support network. So one thing they're doing in this area, for example, is they're making these, I think it's once a month, they're having install fests, which means that people who have problems getting Linux installed on their machine or have some issue, I mean, maybe they've actually installed Linux but want to set up the network in a specific way, can actually bring in their machines to this users group meeting. And there's a lot of people there willing to help who have maybe seen that problem before. Actually, things aren't going so well. I tried it earlier myself. Uh, I had problems, and so I came to this install fest where all the gurus abound. Hopefully, I'll uh, have better luck getting it in. Instead of having uh, of sending emails or writing to news groups on the internet and waiting several days for the answer, sometimes it's easy to come here and find other people who might know about your problem and maybe able to help you. And hopefully, within a few hours, you have your machine installed. Originally, I wanted to install on uh, my larger laptop and so I just did a search on the net and found where uh, there were resources to get help and um, I'm here today because I'm trying to put Linux on this little guy right here which is a Toshiba libretto and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do because it's a weird piece of hardware so any chairs around here Incredible. I think the Department of Justice case has made people aware of the fact that you should at least look for alternatives to Microsoft, and maybe Microsoft isn't the American dream after all. And that kind of shift in perception, uh, you can very clearly see that people just took Microsoft for granted, and maybe they're still buying Microsoft, but at least they're kind of more aware of the issue these days. Microsoft actually used Linux as defense. They used Linux to ground a claim that they don't have a monopoly because Linux could um, essentially push them off their catbird seat at any time. It was a very ingenious argument, totally specious, because it didn't, uh, it didn't 
do anything to answer the charge that they had previously engaged in bullying and various anti-competitive practices, but it was clever of them. In an event, the, the, the judge didn't buy it. Well, ordinarily, we in the Linux community are rather wary about letting Microsoft become the issue, but uh, there was a Slashdot article uh, about December of 98 yeah. where uh, a fellow named Matt at uh, the Noodle had pointed out that the, a gentleman in Australia had managed to receive a refund for the unused copy of Windows that came with his computer. So he declared uh, the 19th of January, was it January? Uh, no, it was February. It's February, I'm sorry. The 19th of February, he declared the 19th of February Windows refund day. And he encouraged everyone to go to their computer manufacturers and return their unused copies of Windows as it was specified in the Windows end user license agreement. Yeah, it's important to remember that in the license itself it says that you can receive a refund if you, if you don't use the software and that the manufacturer is, is bound by law to do this or at least by, by contract and we found that you know if you called up these manufacturers they basically said it stopped bothering me kid and hung up on you. We didn't really want to sort of give out the location of where we were going to meet um, until you know at the very last second so what we did is we had people meet at places that we could control in the different towns around here. So I was the San Jose Marshal, and uh, I believe Nick, you were the San Francisco? I was, I, Rick Moen and I did San Francisco. Right. Yeah. And so we, we had maps there, and we handed them off to everybody who was coming. Well, we actually met at a Denny's that's just outside the Foster City limits, uh, Foster City city limits, which meant also that it was just outside the Foster City police jurisdiction, which meant that any, th any incidents that happened at the meeting point happened in the jurisdiction of San Mateo, and if they told us to get lost, we'd say, fine, we're going to Foster City. Bye. It's sort of the Dukes of Hazard method of avoiding the cops. So, <laughs> uh, well, actually, we originally we marched um, on the other side of this building. We marched around and up onto the parking structure that's up there, and that's where Microsoft had a reception laid out for us with drinks and a big sign that said, uh, you know, Microsoft welcomes the open source community. And the local uh, news cameras got shots of Eric Raymond and the Microsoft representative. Uh, the Microsoft story seemed to mostly be that. Uh, this was not an issue for Microsoft, but rather uh, from the OEMs. So we all needed to go back to our computer manufacturers and try yet again to try and get a refund from them. Uh, we responded to them saying, you know, that's, we've tried that, it's not possible, we need Microsoft to take action at this point. And they just repeated the tagline over and over again, you need to go to the OEMs, the manufacturers, and get your refunds there. We had about 150 people, probably about half of which had signs and such. So. Well, we ended up actually right in this courtyard here. Um, basically, we originally met, gathered outside. Various people sent uh, groups in, people from the FreeBSD camp sent a couple folks in. Um, we had Eric Raymond and Chris actually tried to go up eventually. And, yeah, uh, they had blocked the elevators off to us. Where were their offices? Um, their offices are the ninth... right up here on the ninth floor. We, uh, we got some really nice press out of it. And we think as a result, um, Toshiba made it possible for you to buy laptops without the operating system on it. So it's a small victory, but... Well, you know, and even, even now, uh, companies such as IBM and uh, a lot of other computer manufacturers are allowing you now to buy machines that don't have Windows on them.